Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Shalom, Dickin. Shalom, Shalom, how are you doing? Shalom. Yeah, we're doing good. I hope you're also doing good. Tonight, tonight we are looking at five. I'm sure that's what I told my listeners to look for it. I'm very, very sure they are all ready. Uh, there's a lot happening. So this, it helps us to know where we are coming from and also know where we are going to. So this evening we are looking at something very interesting and intriguing. I'm sure a lot of our listeners are waiting. About the origin of the white man. The origin of the white man. That's what we are looking at. What, what have you prepared for us? We are, I'm, I'm sure my listeners are ready. And, and yes, we are all set and ready to, to, to hear what you have tonight. Sure, sure. Um, well, again, I'm, I'm thinking I down. I'm thinking I down of uh, Israel United in Christ. Um, and it's important to know who your. Uh, can y'all hear me? I'll make sure I hear me. I can, I can hear you loudly. Perfect. Yeah. Um, it's important for our viewers to understand how important it is to know who you are. That's one of the most main, one of the main things we push in now you are see in Israel United in Christ is that um, you learn who you are. And of course, once you learn who you are, eventually it becomes important to learn who your enemies are as well. So um, without, without you know further ado, let's jump into it. Let's go to the origin of our people, the, the children of Israel. Which would be the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and those throughout the those throughout the African diaspora, you make up the twelve tribes of Israel. And that's one of the most important things you must understand, as well as the faith in the Black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. And who and once you learn that, the commandments are next. Okay. So I'm gonna go into Genesis 25. And this is 25. And verse 20. The book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. Now, Isaac was the son of Abraham, okay? And his, his wife was barren. She was having a hard time bringing both children. So we're going to read about um, the Lord eventually hearing their prayer and giving them and giving them eventually her becoming pregnant. Go ahead. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. So they tried and tried and tried and they prayed to the Lord and eventually the Lord heard their prayer and she finally got pregnant. Read on. And the children struggled together within her. So these and children, said, be on, so these children they struggled together within her. I mean, there was a battle going on with these children. So she obviously had more than one in her. So these children struggled together within her. There was a battle going on. Go ahead. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So if it be so, she asked, if this pregnancy is of God, of the blessing of the Lord, why am I in such pain? Because she, these children were fighting in her womb. There was a battle going on with these children in her womb. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. So two nations mean two different ethnic groups. Two nationalities of people are in your womb. Go ahead. And two manner of people. Shall and be two manner means two different types of people. Two different types of people are in your womb. Go ahead. Shall be separated from thy bowels. And they shall be separate. Now, these are twins. So it says two nations means twin, a set of twins are in your womb. 
two different or two manner of people, behavior and likeness um, amongst each other. Go ahead. And they shall be separated. Go ahead. From thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And Go ahead. The shall serve the younger. So the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Meaning, for example, that would be us. We are stronger than them. We are stronger than Esau. Okay, as we're going to read who that is. One is stronger than the other. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. So when it came time for her to deliver the children, it turns out as she's pushing them out, there were two in her womb. Go ahead. And the first came out red. All over, like in hairy garment. So the first they, child came out red all over. The first child came out red all over. Red all over. And he was hairy. Yeah. And they called his name Esau. They called his name Esau. Go ahead. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. So after that, after Esau comes out, who the, who's the elder, he's the oldest one. It said earlier that the elder shall serve the younger. So it says he comes out, he comes out first. Go ahead. And Isaac was three score years old when she bared him. Read again, read from the top again, 26 again, 26. Verse 26. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. So even after they came out the womb. Jacob grabbed onto his heel. So the battle in, continued even outside the womb because these children were destined to not get along. Okay? And, and so the, elder, the younger one grabbed hold of the, of the um, elder one's heel. The younger one grabbed the elder one's heel. Go ahead. And his name was called Jacob. And his name was called Jacob. Go ahead. And Isaac was three score years old when she bared him. And by the time they had these children, these twins, he was Isaac was 60 years old when they had them. So these children, the twin boys, two different manner of people, one came out red. Now you may ask yourself, well, one came out red and one is not described at all. Why? Because one looked different from the other. Two matter. They are fraternal twins. But the reason why one is described as red is because this right here, brothers and sisters, is the originate is the originator or progenitor of the Caucasian race. Okay, we call them. You call them down south. We call them rednecks. Okay, or peckerwoods, red birds. But these are this is the, this is the origin or the genesis of the so-called white man and the so-called Negroes, the Hispanics and Native Americans and and those scattered throughout the African diaspora. We are the sons of Jacob. And the so-called white man is the son of Esau. Read on. Verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And so Esau is a, the children grew, and it says Esau was a cunning hunter. So one of the things that one of the attributes of Esau was this man liked to hunt, very wise and cunning in hunting. Okay, this goes this attribute goes into him hunting animals to the point of extinction and hunting people later on in his existence to almost their extinction. Let's read on. A man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. The Jacob wasn't into hunting. He said he was just a plain man that was not in tents. Go ahead. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. So Isaac loved Esau because Esau, because Esau brought the meat home. But Rebekah the Lord spoke to her and told her the prophecy of the elders are sub the, the elders are sub the younger, one stronger than the other. So she favored Jacob because she, she knew his blessing. Go ahead. And Jacob saw pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. Go ahead. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. So Esau, at this point, um, Jacob was cooking. Esau comes in, he feels faint. And in, in Jacob was cooking, he goes, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage in the pot. Go ahead. For I am faint. For I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. So like that red pottage in the pot that Jacob was cooking, uncooked meat, his name was changed to Edom. Edom means red. 
So his name means red. So Edom means red. He is the progenitor of the red people. The so-called white man is not white. There are different shades of red, from pink to dark pink, which is red. They're not white people. So this is the progenitor. This is the origin of the white race. Prior to this time, there were no Caucasian people as a race until here, all right? So that's the beginning of Edom, of Esau, all right? Any questions so far? No, 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 no questions at the moment. I think we are all trying to follow, follow what 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 you are you are present. So let's let let's go. On. Okay, let's get some more. Let's go to yeah. the book of Obadiah, because some people are like ah, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that, that that's not enough for you. So we'll, we'll get some more. We will get some more. Book of Obadiah. You know what I want? Verse one. The book of Obadiah, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God, concerning Edom. Concerning Edom. That's the progenitor of the white race. Edom. Go ahead. Edom or Esau. Go ahead. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. This is a prophecy written by Obadiah from the Lord regarding the prop regarding Edom, okay, and it was, it was rumored that the nations would eventually rise up against her in battle. So Edom is going to gain power and authority in the earth to the point where nations are going to conspire to overthrow her. Read on, watch this. We're going we're to find out why they ask, why they say this. Read on. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Thou art greatly despised. That's why they say that it's a rise up against her in battle. Go ahead. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. So it's the pride of Esau's heart, Edom's heart, the nation of Edom has deceived thee. Go ahead. Thou that dwelleth in the cliffs of the rock. So one of the most important things to understand is that it says, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Now, if you um, read the history of Esau, Esau resided in the mountains of Mount Seir. Mount Seir, they resided in the caves of Mount Seir. Modern day Petra, okay? Modern day Petra today, it's called Petra. If you look up the images, the images of Petra, it's a giant, um, but it's a giant cliff or mountain with holes in it, caves in it, where they used to live. These are these were cave dwellers, okay? Look at the image right here. You'll see um image image of Petra right here on the screen. Okay, read on. Whose habitation is high. When their habitation is high, they built, they built living, they lived in the mountains. So their habitation is very high. Even today, they exhibit their love and joy of living in high habitations by building up high towering skyscrapers. Okay, high towering skyscrapers you'll find in New York, you'll find in the other nations far behind it. But the originators of building tall, high skyscrapers, um, buildings going into the clouds, it's so-called white, so white man. They do that, their architecture, their archite architects um, build buildings of high stature and so forth, high into the above the clouds. Read on. That safe in his heart. That who says shall, in their heart in their pride. What? Who shall bring me down to the ground? So for a question like that to be asked, that means they would have possessed a power of of the um on the earth. That would that would that would cause Jesus to say, "Let us go up against her in battle." Go ahead. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Now we got to stop there. Though thou exalt thyself or use your symbol as the eagle. Go ahead. And, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. Be verse four more time. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. So when it comes to uh, the so-called white man, when you examine history of the Europeans' rulership and conquest, when they ruled as the Greeks, their symbol was the eagle. When they ruled as the Romans, their symbol was the eagle. When they ruled as the Spain, as Spain, their symbol was the eagle. When they ruled as Portugal, eagle. Then when, most importantly, when they ruled as America, Britain, even Russia, their symbol has always been the eagle. The European nations have always used the eagle as their symbol, or they would exalt themselves as the eagle. All right, read on, watch this. 
And though thou set thy nest among the stars. And though you set your nest among the stars. So when they landed in 1969, you had Neil Armstrong and you had um, Buzz Coldrin. You had, when they landed on the moon, what did they say? They said the eagle has landed, the eagle. And they had an American flag on the moon. Now, some of you may say, well, the moon landing was a hoax. We don't believe in that. Well, that's fine because if they didn't get up there then, they're definitely up there now because Trump has established what is called the Space Force, where they have a space station in space, a dwelling in space. What is a nest? A nest is a, is a dwelling place, a place of residence. So if you don't believe in the moon landing, then you must believe in a space station. Maybe you're skeptical of that. You must explain to me how we managed to have GPS in our phones, Google Earth in our phones, because they have established satellites and so forth in which they established stations to build these things. So the so-called white man has set his nest among the stars. And one of the most notable occurrences of that time, first and foremost, would be 1969 during Neil Armstrong, Buzz Coldrin, and I forgot the other guy's name. But those three men, Apollo 13, they arrived on the moon and they said, we, the eagle has landed. All right? So this is the prophecy that Edom was going to gain power on the earth and he was going to extend that power all the way into the heavens, space itself. Read on. Then will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So the Lord said, once you acquire this power to travel into space and so forth and gain military power and might, I'm going to start bringing you down. And as you look at America today, America is falling apart at the seams today. From the time of Vietnam all the way until now, they're falling apart. This COVID-19, America is at the scene, uh, America is, is unraveling at the seams. You have Trump making enemies of, of, of former allies of America. So you're seeing the prophecy unfold as America is slowly being brought down. Edom is, in fact, um, the ruler of America, all right, which is biblically called, biblically referred to as Babylon the Great. All right, read on, verse five. Verse five. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the great gatherers came to thee, would they not leave slavery? So he's saying, when it comes to robbers and thieves, Robbers and thieves, they, they break into a house or whatever, and they steal what they can carry. You know, and it's and it's oftentimes when they steal, there's remnants left. When it comes to Edom, the so-called white man, he steals until there's nothing left. He steals land, he steals people, he steals identities. All right. So what we're reading about is that this is the are the attributes of Esau. Esau is going to first and foremost live in the caves. Then he would gain, well, first he would gain power, live in the caves or be cave dwellers. Thus the term Caucasian. Caucasian comes from the Caucasus Mountains. This man was eventually conquered by our people in, in the Middle Ages, and we forced them into the mountains, where they became later on known as Caucasians or cave dwellers. But they also were, were cave dwellers in Mount Sierra. They were considered cave dwellers even then. Then it says they were going to gain power. Who shall bring me down to the ground and indicating that they were going to gain power on the earth? Then they were going to exalt themselves as the eagle, which it goes into what? Their empires, Greece, Rome, Spain, Portugal, Russia, and last but not least, America. Okay? Then it says they were going to set their nest among the stars. The first ones to go into space and establish space travel was America. Then Russia, if you don't believe America did it, Russia came afterwards, and their symbol was also the eagle. So that goes into their attributes, red and hairy all over, a red race of people, pale red skin, they're not white, they exalt themselves as an eagle, live in the caves, and then be in established space stations. This is not talking about the Arabs. This ain't referring to Africans. This ain't referring to Hispanics. This ain't referring to Negroes, damn sure. So who is it referring to? It's referring to the so-called white man, the European race that many of us, through colonialism, Love with all our heart and soul. Now, let's get Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament. Let's get some more. Let's see how God feels about this nation. Because a lot of you right now are saying you're pushing hate. 
That's hate. And I haven't been, I haven't said anything hateful yet. But some of you listening in are probably saying, oh, you're pushing hate. That's not true. God is love. God is joy. God is happy all the time. Okay. Malachi 1 verse 1. Let's get some more prophecy regarding Edom. Uh, Edom. Yes, sir. Uh, just a quick, just a quick question. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Yes, you brought the issue of pushing hate. I think I've had a couple of people also, I mean, push that to me that what we are doing is pushing hate between of people. Of I mean, and and I, I tell them, look, in situation like this, have an open mind. Pick what you think will help you, and then and, and, and go go with. It. But I have a question on that. The question I have is, it goes like, so why, why, can you, can you explain to me why God created two nations that were bound to, to conflict or to have conflict? What, 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 would be the, what would be the reason for God creating those two conflicting, I mean, uh, nations? In every, in every history, or let's just say, for example, story. You always have a good guy and a bad guy. You watch movies, you have a superhero, you have the villains. You yeah. have the protagonist and the antagonist. Yeah. When you examine world events, history, things that have shaped history, that from the past until the present, it always evolves, this history always evolves around two particular nations of people. That goes into Jacob and Esau. Okay. When it comes to America's foundation, have, had it not been for Rome, there'd be no Britain. There'd okay. be no America, there'd be no Russia. There'd have been for Greece, excuse me, there'd be no Rome, there'd be no Russia, there'd be no France. All these nations, Dutch, Spanish, the nations that colonized Africa today, the nations that colonized America today, all derived from one source, the Greco-Roman Empire, who okay. exalted themselves as the eagle. These are the ruling empires of the earth. So these em this, this empire particularly gained their power in wealth and rulership by enslaving God's chosen people. Now, I'm going to go to, we read earlier in Genesis 25, it said that Esau, that Jacob, when they came out the womb, how they, there was a battle in her womb. Yeah. And how when they came out the womb, it says that Jacob grabbed hold of Esau's heel. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. So I'm going to read why that happened. Let's get 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. Out the Bible, 2nd Ezra six and nine to see because oftentimes people in, in the christian church say how we're linked during the last days we're in the last days we hear that all the time but what must be understood is that jacob grabbing hold on esau's heel symbolized the the coming of the last days or the end of, of, the, of the, the the last ruling kingdom to rule before the end of days took place second Ezra chapter six and we're going to read verse Mm, do I want, what I want, what I want. Uh, it's verse 7. This is Ezra in the Bible. Ezra is asking the most high question. Now, the same question that Ezra asked the Lord in this book here is the same question the disciples asked Christ in Matthew 24 regarding when, what will be the sign of the end of days. Read verse um, mm, 7. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 7. Now, the Apocrypha is the, were the 14 books that were moved out of the Bible. In the, in the 1800s, they removed up the Bible. They're referred to as apocrypha or hidden books because the, the apocrypha was removed by the white man out of the Bible because it bridges the gap between the Old Testament and New Testament. All right. So this is Ezra, the same as you, Ezra, the same Ezra you read about in the Bible, known as Ezra. He asked this question. Read. Then answered I and said, "What shall be the part and asunder of the times?" Ezra asked the question the disciples asked in Matthew 24, verse one. What shall be the end of times? What will establish the end of times? Read. Or end of days. Read on. Or when shall be the end of the first? And or the... when shall be the end of the first? Read on. And the beginning of it that followeth. In the beginning of it that followeth. Read on. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac. From when... Abraham unto Isaac. Go ahead. When Jacob and Esau were born of him. When Jacob and Esau were born of him, the him is Isaac. Go ahead. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Jacob's hand held first the heel, the heel of Esau. Watch this. 
For Esau is the end of the world. Esau will be the ruling kingdom during the end of the world. Go ahead. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Jacob will be the kingdom to come after Esau falls. So the last ruling empire before Christ returns will be Esau's empire. That's why Esau came out first. It said the elder shall serve the younger because the, the younger was Jacob. Esau came out of the womb first. Jacob comes out the womb holding on to that heel, symbolizing that once your rulership is over, it's my turn. When Christ returns, because Christ comes out of Jacob, because Christ was an Israelite. Jacob is the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. That concludes Christ and his people. We're going to rule after Esau's rule. So that is sort of, right now, we're living in a time where the, where the villain rules the world. So the, the, the superhero, the, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ, the Israelite king, he is the, and he is the protagonist. He is the superhero that's going to deliver us from the evil villain of the world. That's why they're born, because these two play the role regarding the end of the world and the beginning of the new one that's to follow. That's their purpose. That's why they're, that's their purpose. No. Um, let's get Malachi. Oh, there's more. I'm sorry. I'm going to cut you off. Can you hear me? Yes. Ethan, can. can you hear me? Yes, can I hear you. Just give me a minute to quickly announce that uh, if you want to join us, you can join us on 0233-144199. 0233-144199. If you have any questions, you could send them through our WhatsApp line, which is 0233-144199. Or you could call us whilst this, this, this conversation is still going on. We'll still put you through so that you could ask your questions and then we have uh, Deacon in here who will answer. Before, before you continue, there's a very popular uh, story in the Bible. It's mm. about the, the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I, I was expecting to mention that I've, I've not heard it yet. I knew it, it was going to eventually come up. But what is the relationship between that, that story, the Tower of Babel, and the, and the, and the, the white man? What's oh. the relationship between between the Tower of Bible? Because it's a very, very popular story in the Bible. A lot of people talk really? about it. And you oh, mentioned yeah. the fact that the, the white man uses skyscrapers and all that. What is the relationship between that story and then the white man? What an excellent question. What is the relationship between ancient Babylon and the white man? Well, as you know, ancient Babylon was ruled by a, a, a Hamite king, a Kushite king named Nimrod. Ethan. Yes. Yeah, I'm speaking about the, the Tower of Babel. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Um, okay. The ancient Babylon was, was ruled by a king named Nimrod, an ancient Hamitic king named Nimrod. He was the ruler of, the, of Babylon during that time. He was the first Babylonian king. Okay. And he was the one that gathered all nations together okay. to build a tower up to heaven. That was his intent. The Lord saw that by him building that, it, it caused it, he caused confusion and, and, and scattered everybody abroad. Because mm -hmm. the, the, that building was a symbol of, of confusion and rebelling against God. So mm -hmm. the city was called Babel because the, the, the languages were confounded and everybody was scattered abroad. So mm -hmm. then, let's, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Let's read it, let's read it, let's read it. Let's read the correlation between Esau and ancient Babylon today. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Genesis 11 and verse 1. The book, of Gen the book of Genesis, chapter 11 and verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Everyone on the earth spoke Hebrew. Not the false Hebrew today, but really everyone spoke the same language. Because everybody came from the same man. Now be Noah. Everybody came from the same man. He had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. They all spoke the exact same language during this time. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Yeah. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. Yeah. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So all nations under the rulership of this king 
Nimrod, okay? They all, all nations agreed under his rulership to build a tower to reach heaven so that, so that God wouldn't scatter them. To rebel against God, go ahead. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. Stop, 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 stop. The people are one. The people are all united. Everyone is all together. All Shem's children, Ham's children, Japheth's children were all united in this, this erection of a temple, this building of this temple, of, I mean, of this tower. Go ahead. Under Nimrod's rule, the king. Go ahead. And they have all one language. And they all speak the same language. They're all able to communicate the same, this is like uh, this in one language. Go ahead. And this they begin to do. And, 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 this, and they chose of all things to do this. Go ahead. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. But they've done this, they're gonna do even worse later on, being united, all being one people. Sound familiar? All one people, all united? Watch this. Verse seven, go to, let's go down, and there confound their language. Change their language around, go ahead that they may not understand one another's speech. But they can't communicate anymore to build this nonsense, go ahead. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. And they stopped building it, go ahead. Therefore, is the name of it called Babel. Babel, go ahead, mean confusion, go ahead. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Go to Genesis chapter 10 and read verse 8 to see who was over this construction of this tower, who was behind it. So this land was called Babel. You know, watch this. So it was called Babel based upon the confounding of languages. Read 10 verse 8 to 9. Genesis chapter 10 and verse 8. And Cush begat Nimrod. Cush is the child of Ham. Cush the is, a, is the father of Ethiopians today. Go ahead. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. Now remember, it said earlier, if you read about Jacob and Esau, it says Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. Watch this. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. So like Esau, Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord. He hunted and he hunted for men in particular. So unite. He was very, very charismatic in gathering all men together. That was his skill, hunting as a, a warrior and as a hunter of men as well. Go ahead. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. That's his attribute, a hunter. Next, verse 10. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. The beginning of his kingdom, building that tower, was Babel. That was his first kingdom he tried to start. Babel, to build that tower. Go ahead. And Erech. Then he built, when he fell in that, so he built Erech. Go ahead. And Akkad. He built Akkad. Go ahead. And Kalne. Kalna, go ahead. In the land of Shinar. In the land of Iraq. Modern day Iraq today. So that's how, so under Nimrod was all nations being what? United. Today in America, that's referred to as the great melting pot. America is the same way. It's called the United States of America. It says, into the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for some. Not all, because we don't get no justice. So America followed that same attribute. And as I said before, Edom is the founder and ruler of America. Now, let's get um, Psalms 37 and verse 7. Let's see who Edom is today, what his, what his title is. Psalms, David prophesied who Edom will become or his a name he fall under later on in the future. Psalms 137, we're going to be verse 7 to 9. The book of Psalms, chapter 137 and verse 7. Because the question you asked me was, what is the correlation between Nimrod, the cunning hunter, and Esau, the cunning hunter? Nimrod, the ruler of Babylon, and Esau, the ruler of America. Hmm. Verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom, in remember, O oh Lord, David's saying, remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. Edom is Esau, Jacob's twin brother, the, the, the mighty hunter. Go ahead, cunning hunter, go ahead. 
in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Because during this time, um, David was prophesying of the fall of Jerusalem. When the Babylonians came into our land and overthrew us, okay, the, the, the later descendants of Nimrod, Babylonians, came in and overthrew us. And Esau assisted the Babylonians in overthrowing us by destroying and burning down the temple that Solomon built. They said, by, they said raise it, raise it to the foundation. I mean, destroy, to, destroy it so nothing is left of it. Read on. Watch this. So, he said, so the context right now is Edom. Watch this. O daughter of Babylon. What do you call Edom? O daughter of Babylon. What's Edom's name? O daughter of Babylon. He calls Edom the daughter of Babylon. Daughter of Babylon. Go ahead. Who are to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou has served us. So the Lord, so David referred to Edom as the daughter of Babylon, because when you research Edom, Edom, who became later on the Greeks and Romans, not only did they adopt the Babylonian customs, when they became America, they did the exact same thing. They instituted Christmas, Babylonian. New Year's, Babylonian. Okay? Um, they instituted all nations coming together as one. That's democracy. That's Babylonian. That's all Babylonian tradition. All nations coming together as one. One nation under God, indivisible, is Babylonian. And Christmas celebration, Babylonian. New Year's, the year beginning in January, is Babylonian. I can go on and on. Okay? So what I'm, yeah. even the months of the year is Babylonian. Yeah, so from, well, Latin forms yeah. of Babylonian. Yes. Yeah. Uh, with, okay, so there's been a lot of attempts to, to unite the world. So we have organizations like the United Nations. We have, in their attempts to reuse a single currency with uh, with the European Union and, and all that, w would it be safe to say that this is an attempt to achieve or to do what was done by the Babylonians or during the time that the Tower of Bible was built? Would would you would it be safe that all these kind of organizations springing up in in, in in an attempt to unite and bring everything together is 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 an attempt to achieve what the the, the, the folks who built the tower bubble were trying to do remember my question yeah. is, is clear yeah i'm trying I'm, yes um if I'm, let, let, me, let, me, let me try and rephrase it then sure i'm saying that sure. there's been a lot of attempts to to unify the world through the formation mm -hmm. organizations like the united nations the European Union, in Africa, we have the ECOWAS, the AU, and all that, the African Union, and all that. Right. This is to ensure that we, we do things in unison so that we use one currency, there's like flexibility in terms of movement and all that. I'm asking that in this, the, the presentation I just did about the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. the, People wanted to build this tower to get up to heaven, whatever they wanted to do, to get close to God. Or, I'm asking if these attempts, like the United Nations, the European Union, and the rest, you, it is safe to say that they are trying to do the same thing again. Yes. The answer is yes. Because you have to understand, Edom is the modern day Babylon. Edom is modern Babylon. Babylon means confusion. When you examine Edom, Edom is a nation that presents the most confusion throughout the world. If you examine the ruling kingdoms of the world, you examine the Bible itself, even history itself. The main one that causes confusion behind history itself is the so-called white man, whether Christ being a black man or a white man. White man caused that confusion. Everyone knew that the Jews are black, now they're white all of a sudden. Everyone knew that the, the Egyptians were black. Now they're white all of a sudden. So when you even um, everyone knows that the Bible says, um, "Be fruitful and multiply." But the white man comes and says, "No, you don't have to do that. Man can marry man. Woman can marry woman." This is confusion. When it comes to all nations coming together as one, that is confusion. When it comes to United Nations, you're not, the nations are united against our people. I'm gonna get that. Let's get Psalms 83. Let's see what that's for. Psalms 83 regarding the United Nations. Now you may have um, in the midst of the United Nations some of our people sitting at that panel. But trust when I tell you 
They are not part of the EU. The European Union supersedes all of that. And where is the United Nations building found? Where is it found? In America. The United Nations building is found in America. The money, the IMF, um, it is America. Uh, what else they call it? Yeah, the IMF. You have the um, IMF. And what else? The World Bank. World Bank. That's here. All that's here. So you have to, you have to ask yourself, why, why are all those things here? Because America is the modern Babylon of today. The Babylon that the book of Revelation speaks of. That great whore that sits upon many waters. That is Edom. That's why we read in Psalms 137. It says, O daughter of Babylon. David called Edom the daughter of Babylon because he knew prophetically in the spirit that later on in time, America would eventually would rule do Obadiah. Obadiah said, who shall bring me down to the ground? It's the same thing. They would ask that question. They saw themselves as the eagle. That goes back to them being Babylon. It goes back to Babylon being ruled. Power. So Psalms 83, real quick. Psalms 83, verse 1, verse 2. Regarding the nations being united or the European European Union and so forth. Yeah. The book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 2. Below, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. And thine enemies make a tumult, meaning a gathering, a mob, and those that hate you, Lord, have made a tumult. Go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So when it comes to these nations being gathered together, it's to keep an eye on the dark nations that are in that United that are involved in that United Nations, but also to keep a sharp eye on our people as well, to remain united against us in our uprising as a nation, in our up in, 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 the, in the returning of our Messiah. That's why these nations are united, because they know that a war is coming, a war that they cannot win alone, that they must be united against together. To fight against, which are our, which is our, the return of our Messiah, the Black Messiah. That's what the union is for. Read on. And consulted against thy hidden ones. And consulted, and they consult against your hidden ones. Who are the hidden ones? We are. Why are we call hidden ones? Because our identity was hidden from us through the conspiring and the evil and the indoctrinations and the colonialism and the enslavement of God's chosen people scattered among all nations. The Chinese know about us being Israelites. The Arabs know about us being Israelites, as they're gonna read here. The Syrians, the, the, uh, the Dutch, the French, the Spanish, America, the Russians, they all, the elites, the elitists of them, they all know our history. They all have access to our records, our documents in the Vatican, in the Smithsonian, in the museums. They have all our records because when the Romans opened and Jerusalem was sacked in 70 AD, the Romans took our records and, and documents out of Jerusalem and they kept it and saved it. Okay, because you must, when you, conquer your, when you conquer your enemy, you must keep record of him, keep track of him so he can't rule ever again. Read on. Verse 4 They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. So these nations, they said, let us, they said Come, let us cut them off from being a nation. Read on. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Let's give, let's change their language. Let's cut, let's change, let's give them different tribes. Let's, let's divide them. This, this tribe, there'll be this tribe. There'll be Igbo, Yoruba. There'll be South Africa. We'll divide them from this tribe, that tribe. We'll, we'll create politics. So there won't, there'll be Republican on this side, Democrat on that side. So we're, we're constantly divided, whether it be through politics, whether it be through language, color, hair texture, tribe, they keep, they all conspired to keep us divided in that way. All these nations are going to be going to read on, listen. It says that they be, may be no more in remembrance. That's why I was, earlier it says they're called hidden ones because once we're, we're hidden because our identity or the remembrance of our identity, the remembrance of our identity is hidden from us through this conspiracy back in verse two and three, this crafty council, read on. Verse five. But they have consulted together with one consent. They have consulted together with one consent, one agreement, one mind. Go ahead, one heart. Go ahead. They are confederate against thee. They are confederates, like a confederate flag. 
They are confederates against thee, meaning you as in the Lord and your people. Confederate against thee. That goes into your EU, European Union. That goes into your United Nations, which the, which the Europeans control. That's why it's in America. It's not, you don't have a United Nations building in every state. It's in America. Ultimate Read on. The Tabernacles of Edom. So the first nation mentioned in this crafty council in this conspiracy against God and his people is Edom. That's all white folk, all of them, the French, the Dutch, the British, the Spanish, the, the, the um, Belgium, Germany. This is all Edomites, all of them. That's the first ones. They're the ringleaders. These are the, this is the arch nemesis of the children of Israel. But an arch nemesis has, he has what is called, um, uh, um, the term I'm thinking of. Nemesis said they have uh, henchmen. They have henchmen. Henchmen. Um, then that helped them. Assist them. Watch this. And the Ishmaelites. Ishmael goes into the Arabs. <laughs> the Arab nations who gave us Islam. Many of our people over in Africa, a lot of you are either Christian from the white man's colonization or you are Muslim from the Arab man's Arabization. <laughs> Arabized of you. Same thing. Same two sides of the same damn coin because those two nations were involved in the Trans-Saharan and later on Transatlantic slave trade. Those two nations, that's why I was mentioning those two first and foremost. Read on. Of Moab. Moab is the, the Chinese because the Trans-Saharan slave trade and the East African slave trade took many of our brothers and sisters across the Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, to China, to Japan, to Iraq, to Iran during the Silk Road. So that Moab, China is next. Go ahead. And the Hagarines. That's Africans. The Africans that were living in the land that we, we established kingdoms. They were selling us out of Africa to the Portuguese, to the French, Gabal. the British, Dutch that came later on. Go ahead. Gabal. Gabal, more Africans. And Ammon. Ammon is the Japanese. More Asians. At Japanese. Go ahead. And Amalek. Amalek will be the so-called Jews, the ones who call themselves Israelis, the ones who call themselves Jews today. That's Amalek. Go ahead. The Philistines. Philistines today will be Palestinians, Arabs again, or ancient Africans at that time. Go ahead. With the inhabitants of Tyre. With the inhabitants of Tyre. That will be Canaanites, which were inhabitants of West Africa, who sold us out in slavery as well. Go ahead. Ashur also is joined with them. Ashur goes into four nations. Ashur was the, the, the uh, goes into the Kurds. You had the Assyrians, Iraqis, Egyptians, or Turks, and you have uh, Iran. They fall in between that. Go ahead. They have hope in the children of Lot. Ammon and, Ammon and Moab. Selah. Why is David saying Selah means all praise? Why is he saying that? Because David saying, "Thank God is you, Lot. Thank God is you, nations, because God is going to destroy these nations." So he's saying. Say a lot is these nations. This is God's hit list. So when you when you when you examine the United Nations, you're gonna find all these nations of, in the midst of that council, and all the weak of our own people who are who are bought off and paid off by these Europeans who sit there in that panel or brainwashed. They're they're gonna be judged as well. They don't repent. But the nations being gathered together, specifically the European ones are all united because they all know that our deliverance is near. That's okay. why we read earlier Obadiah says, who shall bring me, Edom says, who shall bring me down to the ground okay. in their pride. Okay. You understand? That's yeah. what Okay. So let, let me let me play the devil's advocate here and ask you two uh, questions. Mm -hmm. The first one uh, has to do with, you mentioned the daughter of Babylon. Yes. Okay. So I'm sure my listeners will be asking, why not the son of Babylon? Why the daughter of Babylon? You let's keep that one and let me ask the second question. The second question has to do with, you know, currently, or I would say recently, or not, not so recently, but then something that's very common now is mixed races. You yes. have white marrying blacks, you have black marrying white, and you know, that's that can how 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 do you, how do you place that or what would you call somebody who is born out of a mixed race what happens to somebody like that 
Well, you can, you, can, you can throw a little more light on because our time is almost gone. In. Before you answer that question, let me also say that if you want to join us at 0233 you can send your text message or you could also call us. If you're on Facebook, you can also leave your messages on Facebook forward slash IUIC Ghana. Facebook is Facebook forward slash IUIC Ghana. Just, just go on our page, like us, and then whenever uh, we are live, we'll notify you. So, so uh, Dickon, let's 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 look at these two questions. The first one is sounds a bit you know, oh, the feminist was so why not? Why is it daughter of Babylon and why not son of Babylon? Then nah. the second one has to do with the issue of mixed race because that's something that's not gonna it's not going to go away anytime soon. Well, oftentimes when the most side requires those are nations, he refers to them as a her, like the daughter of that the Jake Israel is referred to as his wife. He, he refers to Israel as his firstborn son. He refers to Israel as his wife, as his lover. So the most side use different analogies. He'll so okay. call so Edom as a race, he refers to as a woman. Okay. Or a woman. Um that's or who's who's wealthy. Just in Scarlet, when you read Revelation um, 12, 13, it goes into a woman dressed in Scarlet. She's red. She's red because Edom is red. And yeah. she's also referred to as Babylon. Sits upon many waters. Well, I'm, if I can't, I'm going to get, and also, but I'll go back to that because I know I'm losing time. So yeah. in terms of mixed races, I'm going to go back to Babylon. But in terms of mixed races, when it comes to the Bible, there is no such thing as a mixed race. Many of you out there in Africa, Y'all have deal with tribes, and many of you out there deal with the patrilineal lineage, patrilineal descent. Many of you out there, especially the tribes of West Africa, deal with the tribe by your fathers, and that goes back to the Bible. You are who your father is. Your mother does not. Your mother may may have a, 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 a um an influence in terms of your features, but in terms of your gender and ethnicity or your race, you are what your father is. Numbers 118. Let's get that. The book of one, Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families. They declared their pedigrees. Like an animal, you have a bulldog, you have a terrier, you have a, a pit bull. Those are pedigrees. So here it says they declared their pedigrees according to their families. Watch this. By the house of their fathers. By the house of their fathers. Go ahead. According to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. So Israel was determined by their tribe based upon their father. For example, you had Moses. Moses married an Ethiopian woman, but his sons were Israelites. Moses was a tribe of Levi. His wife was a Cushite, but he, his children were Levites. Joseph married an Egyptian woman. But his sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, are the 12 tribes of Israel because their father is an Israelite. So you are what your father is. You understand? You are what your father is. Now, um, in terms of, yeah, that, that's basically it. You are what your father is. Okay. Um, so there's no such thing as really a mixed race of people. You are what your father is. That's how it goes. Um, in the eyes of the Lord. In terms of um, Babylon, um, I want to be something real quick. Revelations uh, 12, 17, 17, real quick. The book of Revelation. 17, uh, 17, you know what I want, right? I think it's verse, uh, verse 15. No, verse 14. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 14. No, I'm sorry, verse 13, 13, 13. Let's go, let's go back to Psalms 83 about them being of one consent, of one mind. Verse 13. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 13. No, 17, 13. Revelation 17, 13. Yep. Chapter 17 and verse 13. Uh huh. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. The these in the verse 12 is the 10 horns. The 10 horns is the, is the, is the, is the, is the 10 common mark, it's the European Union. That's what's going into the European nations. We're going to give their power unto the beast going into America, which is Babylon. Go ahead. They're going to aid, aid um, Babylon or America. Now, as you know, based up during Trump's administration, the EU is slowly turning against America and siding with China now. So there's a, there's a, America is slowly weakening. So the EU is slowly beginning to turn against America. 
So in the original, originally, it gave their power unto America and gained wealth and power. But now we're going to read what happens. Read on. These shall make war with the Lamb. No, read verse 13 again. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So they have one mind. They all work together, conspire together. Like Psalms 83. Go ahead. These shall make war with the Lamb. These shall make war with the Lamb. The these are the Ten Common Markets, America and the European Union. They shall make war with the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? The Black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Read on. And the Lamb shall overcome them. And they're going to lose. The good guy is going to beat the bad guy. Jacob is going to beat Esau. Esau is the end of the world. And yes. Jacob is the beginning that follows. Christ is, Christ is going to usher in the beginning that follows. For he is the Lord of lords and king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth. The whore is America, Babylon the Great. The waters that you saw this woman sitting on, go ahead, or what? Are peoples. People. And multitudes. Multitudes. And nations. <laughs> And tongues. All nations decide where? In America, the great melting pot. That's how you know it's a burn to America. Read on. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. They're going to eventually, like you're seeing now, turn against America and begin to hate America. Right? Hello, Deacon. Yes. Deacon, you may, oh, you may have to look at your that. sound. Your sound again. We can't hear you, so we didn't get the last part. You may have um, to look at your, your, your sound. You hear me now? You hear me now? Better. You hear me now, sir? Hear me now? Yeah. yeah. I think okay. it's better. Yeah. All right. Read verse uh, uh, 15 again. Yeah. Verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth. The whore is America, Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon. Verse 5, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of mother, 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 mother is a woman, daughter, mother of harlots, right? And abominations of the earth. She spawned and spreads all the abominations throughout the world in the EU supports her. Then. Go back to verse. Now go back to verse six, fifteen again. This is the great whore, Babylon the Great, verse fifteen. Edom verse in Psalm thirty-seven. Go ahead. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. Go ahead, all nations. Go ahead. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Why the ten horns on this beast? Because they're all the same race. Same, it's, 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 all, it's, all, it's all horns that are part of the same beast. The EU and America are all the same race. Read on. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. That's World War Three. Armageddon. Go ahead. Hello, Deacon. Yes. Yeah, we've almost run out of time, so right. uh, I'll just I'll just give you a minute, or be before I do that, I'll give you a minute to just round up all we've, we've, we've learned today. I think it's been a very insightful conversation today, and I'm sure my listeners have really enjoyed, enjoyed what we discussed today. But before you round up for me, I'll just give you a minute to to wrap everything up quickly. But before that, I think I, I need to do this. Uh, this is Ultimate One Zero Six Point Nine FM, and this is the truth shall make you free. Is brought to you by the Israel United in Christ Church. We are you can find us in Ghana. You can find us at the Philadelphia Center. And then if you find yourself in uh you, you can also find us in Europe, UK, and then also in Africa. You can go to our website www.israelunites.org to to know more about us. If you are in the Eastern region, don't forget we are in Kumase. Our meeting days are Saturdays, which is a Sabbath day, 9 a.m. You can call these numbers. If you are you find yourself in any of these places, you can call these numbers. That's if you're in Ghana. 020-744-23316. Sorry, 2316. 020-744-23316. 
0540-859-255. You can call any of these numbers on Facebook. You can go to IUIC Ghana for Facebook forward slash IUIC Ghana. Like our page. And you know, uh, if, if you have any, any live streamings going on, you'll be notified. This is Ultimate 106.9 of and I've been on the line for the past uh, 50 minutes with Deacon Ethan. He's been talking to us about the origin of the of the white man. I think you've had a very, very compelling conversation. And the uh, next week, we're also going to look at something very, very intriguing. I'll tell you that in a few minutes. But I'll give Deacon about a minute or two to round up what we've discussed. We've talked about a lot of things. Very good questions have come through. If you have questions, if I can send your questions between in the next minute or so, we could also read it out and you can get it answered for you. If not, we we'll just push it to next week and then look at it. But I'll give the about a minute or two to round up the conversation we've had today. Very insightful conversation. Sure, sure. You got that page, brother, real fast? That page, I want to read it real fast about, about Edom taking over Europe. I only is one minute. Okay. You just posted up that pic, post that picture up real quick. Okay. And they have it. You don't have it, then don't bother. You can visit us at IsraelNight.org. Um okay. Uh here it says the first descendants of Esau, the sworn enemies of the descendants of Jacob, even to the end of the world, were at first a small nation inhabiting Mount Sierra in the adjacent country. I'm gonna jump down. It says, uh, it says they were one of the few numbers of strength. Oh, here we go. It says, um, Assyrians, Babylonians. It says they subjugated, spread their colonies far and wide, subjugated Italy, founded, founded Rome and the Roman Empire, at length entirely overturned the Jewish state. And oh, what is it? It says all of Europe. Here we go. It says they hold the dominion over all of Europe. Edom, Esau detaining in captivity his brother Jacob, at least as far as the guards, the tribe of Judah, till his Messiah, Ben David, shall appear. So they took over Italy, Rome, and they hold dominion over all of Europe to this day and have is Jacob, their brother, in captivity until Christ returns. He just said that in Revelation 19, I mean, seven, um, yeah, 17 and 12. So that's in their own books that they that their Edom is the father of the Europeans. All right, that's it. That's in their own books. That's an old old book. All right. So Lord's wrong. Hope I got some um, edification out of that. Um, we are the children of Israel. You brothers and sisters out there, but the African diaspora in Americas, you are the children of Israel. And I pray that you were edified. And the Messiah is a black man. Called Revelation one verse fourteen to fifteen. This is not hate speech. This is love speech. This is truth speech. All right, history, history, true history. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.